Stephanie. How are you? Hello, Emily. I'm doing very well today. Awesome. Me as well. Thanks for thanks for meeting with me in this gorgeous uh, backdrop here of the uh, Norfolk the Bot Botanical Gardens. Gardens. Yes. It's amazing. And uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Stephanie Singer. It's funny that my last name is Singer because I had to develop a good set of pipes. <laughs> I'm a communication specialist at Mercy Medical Angels, which is a nonprofit in Virginia Beach. Mm. And my hobbies include singing, of course. Absolutely. I mean, with the namesake, right? Writing, drawing, and Taekwondo. I actually have a first on black belt in Taekwondo. All right. I will behave myself in this interview. Don't worry. <laughs> that is not what Taekwondo is about. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. And, and yep. those aren't just hobbies for me. Those right. are special interests. You see, you may not know it. The audience may not know it. But I'm autistic. And I'm proud of it. And what are you advocating for? I am advocating for autistic people to be treated with dignity in the workplace and accepted fully for who they are. And can you tell me about some of your pet peeves that might have occurred over time in your work life? Um, some things that were my pet peeves were, I never would have guessed you were autistic. Mm -hmm. You don't look autistic. Like, autism has a look? Mm -hmm. Come on. Or things like... Once my once while I was volunteering at the gardens, mm -hmm. my I started happy stimming. I started, you know, clapping and wiggling in my seat because one of my graphic designs made it up onto a poster board, where they were advertising right volunteer to get all excited about it. Of I got course. very excited, yeah. and my supervisor all of a sudden looked at me and with kind of this expression on her face, like she kind of recoiled a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she said, are you okay? Mm -hmm. At the time, I did not know what stemming was. Okay. I did not have the language to describe what I was doing, mm -hmm. except I'm just excited. Please excuse me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And can you explain to our audience what stimming is, what it might look like in the workplace? Yes. Um, stimming is something that autistic people do. It's short for self-stimulating behavior. It could be talking with your hands. I like to blame my Italian heritage on I like to blame that on my Italian heritage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it can also be a stim. It can be movements like everyone thinks of the flapping hands mm -hmm. or making noises or singing. That's called echolalia. Correct. Can you explain a little bit more to our audience what echolalia is? Echolalia is where you make a sound, where you sing, where you... Recite lines from your favorite movie or TV show just to provide sensory input for your ears and to talk. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can actually lead to conversation, but even if it doesn't, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Another kind of stim is touching something with a nice texture mm -hmm. or looking at a light or looking away from a light or just regulating your sensory input. Or just out of happiness, or out of, an, or out of a strong emotion, like, yay, you know, when I got my poster up. Right, right, right. And so, what would be a way for you to feel more comfortable in your office and stim? What would be an ideal office environment? How would you like to be treated when you want to stim? If I wanted to do like a little happy mm -hmm. clap or start, you know, doing jazz hands or start talking with my hands, mm -hmm. I'd rather people not do that cringy recoiling thing. Okay. I would rather them just not pay it any mind because neurotypical people, you know, I saw you pushing your hair behind your ear and mm -hmm. kind of playing with it or chewing at hangnails, mm -hmm. which you weren't doing, mm -hmm. but... You know, when, when a neurotypical person stems, they don't, you don't think twice about it because everybody does it. Right. When you see the floppy hands or the echolalia mm -hmm. or anything like that, it becomes, what's wrong with that person? And the answer is nothing. Understood. And what would be, what is someone who is, what is neurotypical? 
Neurotypical means that your brain does not have any diagnoses in it, that you are like the majority of the population. It's an alternative for the word normal because what is normal? Exactly. Who yeah. gets to decide what normal really is? Mm -hmm. Right. Who makes that executive decision? Right. Nobody. Exactly. And then, so then what is neurodivergent? Neurodivergent um, has, is where your brain does have a diagnosis, whether that's autism or ADHD or dyslexia or epilepsy, just to name a few. And there is a whole community of neurodivergence mm -hmm. and there is a, and each one has a little subculture. Mm -hmm. It's almost like where you go in the immigrant neighborhoods in New York City, you know, mm -hmm. you have like Chinatown and, you know, little Italy. It's like, um, it's like autistic town mm -hmm. and ADHD town, you know, within the big neurodiverse community. Mm -hmm. Little different neighborhoods. That's yes. an interesting analogy. And what can it affect an autistic person in their physical environment? Um, for example, sounds. Mm -hmm. Most people think very loud sounds like fireworks or um, somebody shouting. But little sounds, too, can be a real irritant, like someone tapping their pencil mm -hmm. on their desk or typing a little too hard. I've been accused of being an aggressive typist. Under understood. And what... What is what can be the response when that happens? If there is typing too loud, or let's say a fire alarm goes off, what what is something that could possibly happen? A fire alarm going off would be a huge trigger. Okay, that can be a, that can be a ticket to a meltdown very quickly because of the noise, because of the rush out of the office. Mm -hmm. Something you can do is you can repair them. Like, hey, we're gonna have a fire drill at this time at this on this day be ready mm -hmm. and if they still have the meltdown you can kind of talk them through it okay they can cover their ears and you can kind of guide them through it but mm -hmm. not like take their hand pull them out the door right 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 that's right. just a terrible thing to do mm -hmm. you can make a gesture like follow me or to to provide that level of comfortability that reassurance so, right yes right so without taking over preparation and reassurance yes. would be two recommendations that you yes. have in that setting. And can you tell me a little bit about hypersensitivity and hyposensitivity? Hypersensitivity is when your senses are turned up to the max all the time. Mm -hmm. For me, my biggest hypersensitivity is my nose. Okay. If someone is cooking fish in mm -hmm. the microwave, Let's you know, say at the I office, can't stand that. or it's they're like, reheating their lunch at the office. Yeah, I'll right. Be like, What's that smell? Funny work story. There was actually a um, they're actually doing work on a sewer line, Virginia Beach, by the office, and there was steam coming out of the toilet, and nobody noticed what was up except for me and my super sniffer. Right, right, right. I noticed something was up and went to the boss and said, "Hey." There is a smelly steam coming out of the toilet, and I do not know what is going on. Mm -hmm. So he immediately calls the city. We evacuate the office and go mm -hmm. home. And it turns out they were squashing the sewer lines, and apparently steam coming out of the toilet happened. Ah, got it. So there's that. That would be hypersensitivity, correct? Yes, and hyposensitivity is where your sensory input is dulled. For example, I have a, I have a very high pain threshold. Okay. For you know some parts of my body, like. If I skin my knee, I'm going to be laughing. I'm not going to be crying like the other kids. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. there was, I know this doesn't work, but there was a time in preschool when I skinned my knee and my friends skinned my knee. We were playing hopscotch or something. Mm -hmm. My friends screamed bloody murder, and I'm laughing my head off. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the best joke ever, and the teacher paid more attention to me. Because of my hyposensitivity, they thought something was wrong, mm -hmm. and I'm like, Pay attention to kids scream bloody murder. Mm -hmm. They're the one who's hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about the social dynamic of the office? Outside of the physical environment, what goes on socially that is going on in your mind in terms of the social Sometimes people will say, hey, how was your weekend? And I will begin, or an autistic people person will begin to tell all about their weekend, the restaurant they went to, the music at that restaurant, mm -hmm. the rude Uber driver who decided to try to hit on them. And it can be very stressful to the autistic person 
mm-hmm. when some when they're the person who asked how is your weekend recoils and says too much information mm-hmm. good vibes only take your negativity and complaining about the uber driver elsewhere mm-hmm. and it's really hurtful to neurotypicals as well because if you say how are you and you automatically respond i'm fine what if you're not fine Mm-hmm. What if you need to talk something out? And the more people say, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, when they're not. It's repression almost. Almost. It's very sad that people are expected to answer, I'm fine, if their soul is weighing 100 pounds. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you think, so it would open up dialogue and allow us to be yes, more to honest. to be more authentic. Okay. To be more direct about how we, we really, really feel. feel. Right, and I think we're slowly starting to allow for that to happen. Very slowly. Particularly in the midst of the pandemic, we're seeing a lot more openness with each other, with colleagues. So maybe we'll start to see more shifts as we start to feel more comfortable with one another. Yes, and I hope that's the case because I guess something good did come out of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Besides Mm -hmm. my camp memoir. Yes, which we loved so much. And what about communication style? Autistic people tend to be very blunt and very direct. They Mm -hmm. do not sugarcoat. They pull no punches. Okay. I remember once when I was like 12 or 13, my mom asked if a dress made her look fat. And I said, yes, it does. Get your blue one. Then I had to work in retail over the holidays one year, and I had to soften my delivery a lot. Mm-hmm. Because if you tell a customer that dress makes them look fat, they are not going to be happy. They're not going to shop at that store ever again. Understood. So that it is just part of who you are. with Who the, I am and how my able, brain works and how I communicate. In terms of the directness or the bluntness, yes. bluntness or the communication style. Yes. And to, that is something that it's not offensive. It's not to We're not trying to offend someone, someone on purpose. Right. You know. It's just and how. And they say we're too sensitive. It just is how you communicate because of the honesty. Yes. yes, and then they say autistic people are too sensitive. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And what message for employees or employers do you have that want to be allies to the community? What I would say is if you have met one autistic person, you have met one autistic person. Every autistic person is different. There are not just coders. There are artists who cannot code. Like yourself. I cannot code Mm -hmm. to save my life. Mm -hmm. But I love to write and I love to draw and I'm very verbal. Mm -hmm. Which goes completely against the stereotype. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would also like employers to know that even if they met every autistic people in the world, they would still only know a drop in the ocean of the lived experience Mm -hmm. and when you have an autistic person talking about their struggles or their gifts or something amazing you defer to their lived experience because that is so much more valuable than being on the outside looking in Mm -hmm. they are the true autism experts not their parent not their doctor Mm -hmm. not the care staff they got through the medicaid waiver the autistic person themselves is the true expert and your experience that you're discussing today is different than other autistic people. Yes. And some, that it doesn't yes. all look like one thing. Which it goes, does not. Go back there is not to a the cookie cutter. Correct. There is not, you know, one kind of stem. There are as many stems as there are mm-hmm. stars in the sky or sand mm-hmm. grains on the seashore. Excellent. Well, that was wonderful, Stephanie. Thanks for telling our audience a little bit more about you and who you are representing and what you would like to see in the workplace. Yes, I believe that if we uplift autistic voices, whether that's through with their actual speech, whether they're writing it down, or whether they use a tablet or a text-to-speech app, if we uplift their voices, the world will be such a better place. Indeed. Thanks again, Stephanie. You are so welcome, Emily. Have a wonderful day. You too.